Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Entertainment Rants podcast. I am your host, Marco Mazzola, and I have a special guest with us today. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Dino Mazzola. Dino's my brother, and today we're going to be ent- we are going to be spoiling the shit out of the Suicide Squad movie. That's the Suicide Squad movie, the new version. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, what did you think of the new movie? You watched it? Yes, I have. I watched it yesterday. Watched it with my son, and oh my goodness, I loved it. I loved it better, much, way, way better than the first one. There was the first one? There was the first one. <laughs> well, we tend to ignore the first one because it was pretty crap. We want to ignore the first one. Yeah, absolutely. So what were your favorite parts of the new one? Let's talk about that. Let's start in there because then we can talk about things we don't like. Okay. For Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> a lot of okay, spoilers, spoilers here. So if you have here. not seen it yet, stop this podcast immediately and come back to it when you're ready. Okay. So first thing I liked was very first beginning five ten minutes of the movie going on to the beach and half of everybody dies it was insane it was insane did not see that coming at all i you know i figured like you know because the trailers don't necessarily show you that and they're actually they do they have the big walk-up squad where everybody's walking up towards the camera so you figure all right these guys they're gonna this a massive cast and there's a huge cast of people huge cast. throughout the movie and they chop it in half or less than half within the first 10 movies blew me away in a matter that they blew them away, Captain Boomerang was toast, <laughs> absolutely toast. And Michael Rooker's character, he was a riot. That was a riot. Him swimming away, you know, scared, and he acted like Mr. Tough Guy in the in the very walk in, and then he's swimming away, scared. No, I don't want to do this. No, 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 no. It was insane. I couldn't believe they killed him <laughs> off that quickly. I was actually kind of looking forward to seeing him <laughs> throughout scared. the movie because I love Michael Rooker, and then all of a sudden, yeah, so what? He's dead. Get over it. <laughs> Move on with your life. Then we had um, – now, I, I'm not familiar with all the characters. Who was the woman in the beginning? What's her name? The one that was flying around and then got toasted underneath the truck? <laughs> Some of the characters were a little different. Some of them I did not oh, see before. There was there was a few uh, like Mongol. Yeah. Who was supposed to be Mongol's yeah. sister. That's what it was. That's who she was. She's Mongol's sister basically. So, like, I thought she looked familiar. Um, I did not recognize um, Nathan Fillion. I didn't realize that was him at first. I knew he was in the movie. And I was trying to place him, uh-huh. but they did a pretty decent job with you know with his, his mask and everything like that. So I didn't really recognize that that was him. Yeah, until you the, didn't, until the you didn't know it was till until the end credits. But yeah, that was Mr. TDK. Yeah, Mr. TDK. That's right. I loved Polka Dot Man. I thought he was well he was done. Awesome. He was his anxiety and everything else. He had his his motivations. Oh. Yeah, his motivations were incredible. <laughs> and constantly seeing mom and then seeing mom as surprise surprise as Starro. Yep. We kind of knew going in that Starro was going to be the big, you know, the big baddie. At the end, you know yeah, what? Though I'm, I'm actually kind of glad they brought him in. The fact that they brought him in is like an homage to the comic books because the comic books they brought Starro in as yeah. was it like Justice League 100 yeah. or something it, like was that. Was it that one or was it the? Yeah, it was like 100 or, or something. Like that. that was one of the. It was the original. One of the original, it, was the original ones. it was the original. It was the original Justice League comic book that they, you know, right. they changed over from like Justice Society when they made the first original and you see them all sort of you know getting trying to attack Starro and he's right. pretty much tooling on them all yeah right. but it was a great homage I thought I did I like that I liked the way they put him in I like that you know James Gunn genius genius in this thing in this movie mm-hmm. I love the way they brought him in and he was legit huge yeah. everything was in there there was no like you know and they're always going to tweak a little bit. They're always mm-hmm. going to tweak the uh, origins or tweak how they came about or, you know, that it came to Earth and it was small and then started to get bigger, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. You know, you got to write it in a different different way than necessarily the comics do, but I thought it was well done. I thought they put that in there well. well. The done. stars that, you know, those little minions that come out and attach everybody's faces. Very I well thought done. that was real, well done. Um, he was huge and nasty and just walking around kind of goofy around the town. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, I didn't really expect that, so that, that was fun as well. Um, I liked uh, Peter Capaldi. Mm-hmm. I thought he was good. He was very he was good. good. Almost uh, didn't recognize him until he started talking. Yeah, no, I got him right away. His yeah. face I got right away from Doctor Who because I was I liked Capaldi as Doctor Who, not my favorite one, but a good Doctor Who. Which will be uh, on another podcast. That'll be another. That's a <laughs> podcast for another day. We'll definitely be getting to to, uh, to Doctor Who. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought his he was good. Uh, it was crazy. So one thing I want to talk about was the sheer amount of blood and oh, gore in this movie. So let's just get it right out in the front street. This is not a movie for kids. No. Nope. Not a movie for kids nope. at all. Between the profanity and the sheer amount of blood and guts that happens in this movie mm-hmm. was incredible. When Harley comes up and shoots the guy okay. and he's just kind of – he's crawling along the floor bleeding out. Didn't expect that. Like we said, right from the beginning on the beach. Or King Shark picks up a guy and eats him. He 
eat, well, th- first he eats a couple of guys. Yeah. Then he just takes one guy and rips him in half. <laughs> Just pulls the guy in half. See the intestines like stuck just, just stuck to from side to side. Like, what is going on here? This is ridiculous. It, it was awesome. That I really enjoyed. Very ridiculous. Yeah, it was fun. Like the amount. So they were just kind of going for it. Like it was not even pretending to be necessarily something serious, but really something more fun. And something more fun than the original one. Again, we keep going back to that original horror show that that happened. You know. I love the fact that they almost retconned the first one out completely. Right. Right. The su- they call it the Suicide Squad. Right. Um, or the the fun that they had between the competition between John Cena's character. Yes. And uh, Idris Elba's Idris character. Elba's, yes. Yep. I thought that was fantastic. Again, some stuff. And, you know, just like the, their random killing of people mm-hmm. was kind of unpredictable. You know what I mean? Are this is this character going to make it out alive? And and, and spoilers, not many do. No. Um, so like that was kind of cool. Like you don't. So basically, the, the the one thing to take away is don't get too attached to any of the characters <laughs> in it, and hope that this guy's definitely going to be in the next one. No. Nope. All right, because the, most of them are not going to be in the next one. Again, uh, it, it's a lot of blood, a lot of death in this movie, but done in a very fun way. Very very fun. Very you know kind of you know obviously comic-y, comic book way. Very. Um, but just definitely well done on that. I, I enjoy that completely. Um, what else? Ah, oh, see, there's the fact that they brought in the the love interest of a Harley Quinn. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, completely ignoring Joker completely. Like I love that. I I just said completely twice. I love the fact that they <laughs> got rid of like the Joker stuff was not thrown in there this no, time. It no, it wasn't. Uh, Cuz it was superfluous and useless in the first one and, they, and it would have been then, even more so in this one. And then the fact that they kept Harley Quinn true to herself yep. that she blew the hell away. I got to say the <laughs> one aspect that wasn't crazy about her is her accent got deeper and thicker yep. in this one and sometimes it was off-putting. It was a little. It was too much of an accent on this one. Yeah, she didn't have the high pitch that you you know the, the because we're all used to the Tara Strong voice because that's the first introduction we had of Harley Quinn. You know, with that voice, and she was you know she's almost trying to play that, but obviously she's not Tara Strong, so she can't. But it was it, the, the accent got a little it. thick. It got yeah. a little thick. You know, she's almost too, you know, too. Uh, I don't want to say southern, but like it just got like a weird accent to it that was. She kind of broke character. A little she bit. did. She definitely broke it a few times. And, you know, it's gonna happen, but I would love to have them to pull it back a little bit and back to her original. Um, but yeah, getting rid of the Joker aspect helped that a long way, and it obviously let her be more free in what they could do with her character because she wasn't supreme, supremely focused on you know putting being involved and hoping to save her, and that she could actually do it. So and I think they kind of did that with Birds of Prey. They did. You know what I mean? That that helped. Along with having birds of prey in between them, allowed people to see that it doesn't have to be her and the Joker all the time. Nope, it can just be her. Because frankly, let's face it, in DC world, she's more popular oh, than the yes. Joker at this point. So, Much. you know, she stands definitely well on her own. Um, what were some of your other favorite characters? Hmm. Well, Polka Dot Man definitely was oh, a, a. He was so good. He was so good. Uh, even Ratcatcher too. Yes. I thought she was pretty cool. Yes. And the, and her little rat. Her little rat was awesome. And I love the fact that Idris Elba's character was completely afraid of it the entire, <laughs> the entire At the time. very end on the plane, he's like petting, petting it, it, reluctantly petting it. Like, oh, <laughs> I guess if I have to, this thing, this rat's going to sit on my leg. I guess I'll have to pet this stupid thing. And his little jacket on. Uh, I liked uh, really briefly Taika Waititi as her dad as Ratcatcher 1. Yeah. Like, I, I saw him in the credits. I'm like, where are they going to put him in? Yeah. You don't see him for the whole thing. All of a sudden, like, two second scene of her flashback with mm-hmm. her dad. You see him like oh that's a good that was a good put in I like I like him I like him as an actor I like him as a director <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to the next Thor movie Yep it's gonna be awesome um, So well that's a, that'll be another podcast for another, another day podcast Yeah yep. definitely um, What did you think of Amanda Waller like in her character this time Like she's always strong She has you know she's she's that character that always she's has always, the way out She's ten steps ahead of everybody but then gets taken out by her own staff She was it's, always very hard ass and tight with. You know, with everything, but the the fact that she was undermined by her staff on this it was one, weird. It was, was kind of weird. It was weird. Like all of a sudden, like just a disgruntled worker kind of banes her out. But then it it kind of uh, played it off. If you stay to the very end of the credits, yes, very yes. very end of the credits. Not a spoiler. We know most movies are training us to watch till the very end of the credits. Very so end of the credits. Do that. Make sure you do that. They show you uh, some of those staff are going to lead into the new series that they're going to work on, and that's With John Peacemaker. Cena's character. Yeah, Peacemaker going to have his own series, I believe. Right. Yeah. Hopefully that. Yeah, we'll hope start hearing some news about that. 
eventually but those things take forever but uh yeah that's awesome i was i was surprised i was surprised they just beamed her out and then just you know the staff almost took over for her <laughs> and she just kind of sits sulking in her in her office like hey, bricks <laughs> they, they took me out so that was interesting um they, i mean the staff themselves were kind of like innocuous you didn't really know who was who and really yeah, they didn't necessarily have to care about them so much uh, so that was kind of different um i thought King Shark was ah, uh, I he honestly was awesome. he was my favorite. I think he was awesome. I you know what I mean? Like it was a different, not a different. I would say a different take on the character. He's a little smaller than he probably should be. I think he's supposed to be yeah. a lot taller. He's a lot than, taller, but and I think that creates like visual interest or visual in, uh, complexities when they're trying to film. The the fact that they left him with like. Almost no intelligence. None. At all. None. He was just a nitwit, just like repeating and just constantly wanting to eat. Num nums. The num nums. That's <laughs> it. Like just constantly wanting to eat and just, you know, speaking just nonsense. No, not num num. Yeah. Num I mean, num? Exactly. No, not num num. <laughs> not quite as bad as a Groot, but, you know, it was there. It was definitely there, but definitely fun. The invincible. You know, his, you know, his skin and everything like that, just being able to be the powerhouse uh, of the group and oh, taking yes. it out. Um, I did. Love. I know we're kind of jumping all over the board here. I did love when they go in and they're supposed to take out the the, the people that had uh, uh, flag captured, and it turns out to be the good guys. <laughs> good. They just lay waste to the entire village of people, like the entire squad of rebels who are supposed to help the country and overthrow the, the the regime there, and they just take them out. They're like, "What did you do?" You just killed all our people. How, like, yeah, s- yeah, shit. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I haven't seen them. Yeah, they're not here. I think they went out for a, a sig or something like that. I don't know what happened, but uh, that was interesting. But it, that's the one of the great things about this movie is there was a lot of like twists. There's a Very, lot of twists, like things you just didn't. It wasn't that kind of formulaic movie where you're just like, ah, oh, this is gonna happen. All right, this twists, is gonna happen next. Comedic twists. Yes. Yes, it, was, it wasn't just sitting there because so many of these movies, you know, they're so formula and James Gunn just doesn't do formula, right? He just kind of does his own thing with it, which I love. So many movies are just like, yeah, I know what's going to happen next. Okay, then they're going to do this. Okay, then this person's going to get shot. Okay, this person's going to jump in, they're dead. And it did not happen. No. It was it, just like, holy shit, I can't believe they went there every five to ten here's minutes. Here's a good instance. Weasel. Yeah. Weasel. They, they bring him in as, okay, here's Weasel. Yeah. What, what's this character going to do? Okay, well, they jump off the plane. He can't In swim. The water, he can't <laughs> then he we drowns. check if the guy, the weasel, can swim. No. And then, of course, <laughs> and surprise, surprise, at the end, he comes back. <laughs> he wakes up, blurts the water out of his mouth, and waddles off. So, you know, we'll see him in the next one, oh, wandering probably. around Quarter Maltese, just not knowing what the hell to do. <laughs> so that that'll be a, that'll be fun on that one. Um, yeah, that beach that's scene. A, that's was the crazy. fact. I mean, the the fact that they brought in those comedic twists, and whoever thought that he couldn't swim? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. One part of it was that they were they were basically stuck on Cordon Maltese the whole time. I found that like good, but almost kind of limiting. Mm. They just stuck on this island. You know, it's a obviously it's a big island. It's not just a small island. It's a you know it's a country, but mm. it was kind of like there wasn't yeah you know, because Starro was there. There right. was less of a um, global threat, right? Because you know what I mean. Like, so how does he? You know, it's a starfish. Obviously, he go through the water, but they never even get to that point. No, we're like, oh shit, it's getting off the island. Like, what are we gonna do? Because otherwise, it's just stuck on the <laughs> island. You know. If it gets everybody on the island, if it turns everybody into zombies, then just freaking nuke the island and it's done. It's you know done. what I mean? It's done. There's not a massive global threat. It takes over everybody with this little starfish. Yeah, and- but then again, it is Suicide Squad, right? So they're mm-hmm. not necessarily like, you know, Superman level of threat. No. Necess- and even though Starro kind of is, right? But they're still not there, you know what I mean? Which is, you know, this, well, again, a podcast celebrate. for another day where the Nolan verse in that last Batman movie was a Superman level threat and they give it to Batman. Doesn't work for me. We'll talk about that another day in my sheer well, hatred it was, it for those was, movies. It was almost Superman level. I mean, Idris Alba did put a kryptonite bullet into That's Superman. right. That's right. He did put him in the infirmary. That's, That's right. That's why he was in yeah. the prison. He always, when they when they give you little dropbacks like that, you almost wish that they're like in another movie kind of show it to you or, or something. Or show a flashback. Yeah, do some kind of flashback. Like, how the hell did he do that? Like, that's pretty impressive, right? So how the hell did he go and do that? So you maybe want to see that as a flashback in another movie. Yeah. Definitely. And flashbacks, I mean, they the fact that they kind of tied it into the first one, even though it was not the first one, they tied it in with the characters, with Captain Flag, that, or Colonel Flag, excuse me, and Harley Quinn and Boomerang. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, Harley and comes obviously. on the plane and, hey, Boomerang, how's it going? You yeah. know, and Boom's like, hey, who are, how, what you doing back here? Pre-? You know, yeah. they, they it brings it in and ties it in a little yeah. bit. So it, it is kind of good in a way. Yes. And, but it is a much better the fact that they moved 
hell of a way from the first one. Yes, definitely. It was definitely a different direction uh, altogether. The, like I said, the first one was very, I'm not going to say serious, but more serious. More, you know, this is a story. This one was just, just fun and, mm. and funny. And the first one was not funny at all. Um, it was actually kind of sad. <laughs> that was the product they put out with. But, um, you know, and, and the fact that they didn't feel like they had to, A, put the Joker in. They didn't have to put Batman in. Like these, you know, these big staple characters, they feel like we can ride this movie mm-hmm. on just these, you know, zealous characters, characters, if you will. Yep. Like, who the hell is Polka Dot Man? But he's this major fun part of a movie. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to put Batman or Joker in there to make it a realistic, like, okay, you need to watch this. And if you, you need to watch this way more than the first one. And if you think about it, look, if you knew the comic books, the Suicide Squad wasn't always a set group. Right. It was always different. Yeah. You know, every other comic book. Yeah, kind of like DC's Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what I mean? Right. Like, the, not the Guardians, the, the, the Legends. The, excuse me, the Legends are, the, the it, staff keeps changing. Current cha- currently changed, right. Yeah. So, it's it was pretty good. I mean, I mean, the fact that, like, okay, the first ten minutes, you think this is your main squad you're going to go yeah. with, and goes in there, and they all die. Yes. I mean, yeah. And you don't, you, even know, harkens, you don't even know that there's, hey, there's another group. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole other group on the other side. But it harkens back to me, and this is going way back. So if you're if you're under the age of, I would say, at least 30, maybe even 40, you know what the hell I'm talking about, the original Mask TV oh, yes. show. I mean, well, that's a podcast for another day because I'm a huge Mask fan. We'll definitely talk <laughs> and we'll get to that eventually. But every show is like, all right, who's going to be the squad? Who's yep. going to be, who do they need on the team today yep. to help with this particular mission? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, what are they, who has the right you know skill set for this particular particular mission hey, we need this guy here yeah, with this the, the helmet, the, 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 list. yeah the watches start going up but the same thing so they could keep doing these movies and just keep changing the characters out i mean obviously dc like many has a huge library of you know z-list <laughs> celebrities if you will uh that they can pull from you know what i mean in terms of their villains you oh, know? yeah i think that'll be exciting to see yes. i definitely hope I, I didn't hear did you hear if they're already greenlit a second one or let's say a third one but let's call it a second one i, I have not heard myself no if they're, if they're yet. planding on doing another you know one it's it's hard I, to say just yet because this is opening weekend right i okay. thought i heard james gunn saying that he would be he He'd likes be it. he wants it. to be in yeah he's that okay to stay read. with dc and do some more with them that i did um, read. yeah so hopefully knock on wood that that definitely happens again that's plastic so um <laughs> and obviously great for a podcast so uh <laughs> It's audio. So, you know, I think that would be good to see another version with, you know, a slightly different squad. But hopefully they, you know, and I'm not saying they have to put Harley in again. Although, from what I read, she will definitely be in again. Like, mm-hmm. Margot Robbie's obviously up for doing more. But she's their cash cow. So, you know, yeah. one of the reasons she didn't bite it in this one is, like, there's no way you're killing off Harley you, Quinn. You're Harley Quinn want, you know want, what I mean? They want people to come in because they like her. I mean, right. the guys like her because she's a very pretty girl. I mean... Yeah. Girls like her because the fact she whoops ass. She's a strong character. She's a super strong character, male or female. She's a strong character. Yeah, she like is. she is great. She holds her own. She that fight scene of her escaping, not just her escaping and you know choking the guy out with her legs, but everything up to that up when to she's that just point. like, oh, you were trying to save me. Okay, I can go back inside. <laughs> from that, from one end to the other, was insane, <laughs> and it, it gave me that kind of almost Deadpool feel yes. to it where you know she's using the staff and she's whipping around the hallways you know she has the gun then she has mm-hmm. the staff and she's just stabbing assholes left right and center and just crushing them but the animation yeah. the cartoonish graphics they put behind it was much like deadpool when he had like the little you know oh, yes. when he got stabbed in the head and he got the little horse and stuff like that so like it would very much harken back to that i really appreciated that mm-hmm. it was just, it was another part to like this is fun it's a comic book movie, so don't take shit too seriously. Yes. You because we're putting you silly you birds can't. and graphics and hearts in this animation in a massive, crazy fight scene. You can't. I mean, you know I mean? the fact that, okay, they're, they're pointing guns that, and without even looking and then shooting and killing Right. People. She's just spinning around in that, that circular hallway, just like shooting people, just pulling her hands together bang, apart, bang, together bang, apart, bang, bang, bang. and just taking people out with barely even looking at all. Somehow she magically knows the person's going to appear there in that period of time. Right. But then going down that straight hallway where she's just taking people out and she got the double guns just shooting everybody down <laughs> and then just starts, then has to do hand to hand. The hand to hand was Great. Hand to hand was great. That was really good hand to hand. You know, um, if so, if you don't know me, I own a karate school in um, Woburn, Massachusetts, and so my whole life I've been <gasps> in martial arts. I know, big surprise, shocker. I've been uh, I've been a martial artist since I was eight years old, so thirty seven years now. Don't do the math. And uh, you know, so when you watch fight scenes in movies, 
it's interesting, right? When you do yeah. that for profession and you watch it, like, okay, that's – yeah, and you know it's a movie, so you have to suspend disbelief. And I'm totally fine <laughs> suspending disbelief, okay, if that's the world you set up. And they totally set up that ridiculous yeah, world. That it do. sets up the ridiculous world of, like, none of this shit can happen. So let's get fun with it. Let's get extreme. Well, they set it up to the fact that it's – a comic book. Yeah. It's a comic book movie. It's a, yes. It's out it's of the It's not a comic book movie do that's trying to take anything seriously. in the comics. Yes. So exactly. that's how they set it up. Yeah. And that, and they played through that from beginning to end. They did not try to trick you to think this is anything that's real. No. Nope. And then all of a sudden to flip the script and go, oh, by the way, no, it is a comic book movie. We're going to do some ridiculous shit. It was right from the get-go. Right exactly. from that opening scene. Because the reality that that opening scene, that that beach scene – the fact that anybody made it out alive <laughs> is amazing. ridiculous. Is it fully ridiculous? There's no way with the crowd of you know the, the the soldiers that were heading up, they would have been completely wiped out. And you know Harley's running through a, a rain Barrage of bullets. bullets it's yep. no way. Somebody's picking her off. You know what I mean? Like there's just <laughs> no way. So the fact that they're able to do that and, and keep it going that was fun. I, I definitely enjoyed that. I mean, it, you know, it's it's definitely a rewatch. You can absolutely rewatch this movie a few times. Definitely. You know what I mean? I, I say this a, a quote. There's, anybody knows there's me. There's always stuff that you're going to miss the first oh, time. Oh, yeah. And you got to see it the second time. And, oh, you wait a minute. To, you have to I have to watch that the yeah, first you time. you have to watch it again. And I, so anybody that knows me knows that, like, if I hate something, if I don't want to watch something, like, do you want to watch that? And I'll tell them this is my one quote I'll use every time. I will not watch that if it's playing on the inside of my eyelids. And that <laughs> is the first movie for me. I will not rewatch it again, even no. if it's playing on the inside of my freaking eyelids. They, okay. They but this, I could. They could have done that first one a lot better. You're yeah. right. Yeah, because you had good characters and things like that. When they dropped Katana, no dead shot. Nope. You know what I mean? There's the, the so many characters that were in that made it out of the last movie alive, nowhere to be seen in this movie because they wanted to distance themselves as far as they could. Correct. But still having to have Amanda Waller in there. I mean, you have to have her, obviously. She has to be in there because she was the mainstay with everything. Yeah, she was everybody always together, in there. Yeah, bringing absolutely. everybody together. Yeah. Setting up the squad and sending them off on their mission. So you have to have her in there. I get that. And we know we talked about Harley and you have to have Harley in for multiple reasons. Um, you know, but I loved Idris Elba's character. I loved his motivations. Yep. I loved his – he was just a badass. Mm-hmm. Scared of rats, but a badass. <laughs> um, you know, one, one thing I liked about this movie was that I, I read Suicide, Suicide Squad. I've seen some stuff about them, but I'm not entrenched in Suicide Squad. I don't know their whole history from beginning to end. And that's right. okay. The beautiful part about that is you can go with fresh eyes mm-hmm. and just enjoy the movie. I think sometimes that's better because, you know, like I've known Batman since I was a little kid. So when they screw up a Batman movie, Nolanverse, when you screw with a Batman movie, Nolanverse, it's, Nolanverse, it's, it's, it's <laughs> off-putting. You know what I mean? But we have good versions out there for me. Right. You know, there's good versions and there are, you know, and Nolan versus good for some people. We'll talk about that another day. But you can go into this movie with fresh eyes going, I don't really know these characters, Mm -hmm. you know, other than like let's say Harley and a few of them. So just, you know, have fun with it. Do whatever the hell you want. Right. You know, you, they obviously I think as far as I know, they stuck true to somewhat of the characters. But if they veered a little bit, it didn't didn't put me off of the movie like that's ah, not what that character is about and that's not how that person reacts. It's just fun. Right. It's meant to be fun. It's very fun. You know? And the the fact that the director stayed fun with it, he didn't he yeah. didn't go off and and put it in his vision and, and I mean it's a James Gunn movie so you can definitely tell it's a James Gunn movie but it is what it's meant to be it's a comic, comic book, book movie, movie that looks like a comic book movie acts like a comic book movie and takes you on the wild ride from the from the first credits to the end credits and beyond right well the, I'm kind of referring to there are some act uh, directors that did take over a comic book movie and they totally ruined it because of the fact they wanted to be in their vision. Yeah, they put their own they stink on it, as I say. They put their stink on it big they time. Can't take it. I have a feeling, and this is another whole, and we keep saying this is another podcast for another day, but like the difference between, let's say, DC and Marvel, I think Marvel with Kevin Feige has a one direction. Mm-hmm. So even though different directors direct the movies and they look slightly different, there's an overall feel to them and you know the story is the story. Yep. Whereas DC, Warner Brothers controls it entirely and it doesn't feel like they let DC control their characters. So they have 17 different views or versions of the these characters and these movies so from one to the next they don't feel very cohesive no right they're almost like yes we're trying to do a multiverse but no we're not trying to do a, a, a universe here so you know just deal with what we got and you're throwing so much at it you're throwing so much shit against the wall it comes out like that and like you said different directors put their stink on it and i want to do it this character this way but that's not the way the character was meant to be and you see why the dc is not doing as well right. in the theaters as the marvel movies that's right uh, now the difference is dc uh, animated 
is crushing, crushing it, it. Crushing it. Whereas I'm not a huge fan of Marvel's animated movies. No. You know, I'm looking forward to What If, mm-hmm. but I'm not a huge fan of their previous stuff. But I love their movies more than DC movies. But I grew up DC. Right. You know, I was a kid, and like I said, I was born in the 70s. I grew up in the 80s, and mm-hmm. so that was my stuff. But, you know, so like I was superpowers. Yes. You know, I played with all those toys. You know, you, my oh, brother, yes. you know I all remember. the toys I played with, G.I. Joe and everything else. But, like, I grew up Batman, Superman. Like, those were my characters. Even though I knew Marvel, I and liked Justice Marvel. Justice League. And- but oh, I. Just- I centered around that. Yeah, because I had all that shit. So, you know, <laughs> coming into these new movies now, it's like this is not the DC I knew. No. You know, it's very dark. It's very gritty. So the difference between Marvel, I always felt, was that Marvel was more the grittier, almost, let's say, quasi-realistic, you know, real-world problems, problems, things like that. And DC was kind of the lighter. We're fighting aliens. We're fighting this shit. And it's yep. it's completely the other way around. Fighting DC is guy, super fighting dark. And that's, I think yep. it's mostly Snyder's first problem that's why I keep kind of looking for I know it's not a popular opinion but I can't wait till they get rid of him and he's like moved on from his tenure and dealing with it which I don't think is going to happen anytime soon but it kind of looks like they're trying they, they, they still are has trying. a stink on all of it they let they let him do that four hour one just because oh god he wanted to get his that point was out. and the that fact that the, the fans bad. wanted it you know what I'll, I'll give this much it it I liked it because the fact that they answered a lot of stuff that the other Justice League movie yes. did not have. I know we're going off topic, but I like the fill in. The fill ins. Green all, Lantern, things like that. Yes. I like the fill in. And we'll go back to Suicide Squad in a second. But the couple things I did not like about the new the new version, and I, believe me, it's not it is better than the original version. But what I was hoping for the new version is a better looking Dark Side. I think yes. they, you know, he did not look like Dark Side to me. Nope. He just looked like he looked like another cave troll from Harry Potter. Oh, just like they did with just like they did with uh, another uh, podcast. Yeah, just you know what I mean? <laughs> and then and then the whole and, and I know people argue this left right side that whole four by three aspect ratio. Mm-hmm. That slapped the idiot if I could. Like I understand it was made for IMAX and that looks better in IMAX, but I you, you have IMAX for what? A couple of months? Yeah. And then everybody's gonna Everybody watch, it home. watch it at home. For the rest of the the rest of the life of that movie, everybody's gonna be watching at home on their mm-hmm. widescreen TVs. So it was an artistic choice, and it was a bad one. Yeah, bottom line. Very. And then they have the dark, the black and white version for no, no good reason. reason, no good reason whatsoever. So that's a case of uh, so going back to Suicide Squad. That is a case of a director being artsy fartsy with a movie that doesn't need to be artsy fartsy. Like you're putting your little arty. You know, spin on it, uh-huh. cut the crap. It's a comic book movie. Just make it a comic book movie. Which, yeah, comic honestly, movies, the panels are all different. They did get kind of artsy fartsy in there because their colorful costumes were very colorful. Look at Javelin. Javelin had that bright yellow. But is costume. that artsy fartsy or is that comic booky? Because comic, book comic booky, artsy fartsy. I thought those. I thought <laughs> I thought that was but, comic book all the way. But comic book costumes I'll, are completely unrealistic. I'll take that. This is a comic book movie. They should stick to comic book. Yes. Designs. Yes. Okay. As close um, as you can to put it on screen and not some dude in spandex. Or unlike the X Men movies, where which was like, completely the other way around. It was just dudes in motorcycle outfits. Thank you. Until grab, until the very last one, in the very last second, yeah. we waited what fifteen years 15 to finally years. see them in actual X Men costumes yes. for a half a second before they shut the danger room doors. Yeah, and you started there screaming at your you know at the movie theater or your TV. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks. Two seconds and it's gone. But this movie, Suicide Squad, kept to the comic book costumes, comic book costumes, and, everything. Yeah, exactly. And again, they're you know they're more realistic as they can be on screen. Well, yeah, because they brought in like a little bit of a technology to them and and stuff like that. Like yes, polka dot man. I mean. The stuff coming out of his his sleeve and his yeah, arm his gauntlets basically. Yeah, those were awesome. I love that. I love um, uh, Idris Elba's character, just like just constantly pulling pieces off him, just constantly and pulling and connecting. And they're just they're getting bigger and bigger until he's finally shooting Starro with that massive gun. That was pretty cool. That was very that cool. was really fun. I, I liked him a lot. I'm definitely I'm glad he didn't you know spoilers. I'm glad he didn't bite it. Nope. So hopefully we'll get to see him again in the, in another one. Um, I was surprised uh, um, about Flag that they they offed him. Yes. Yeah. And again, it's comic books. You can always get him back. It's not really that big of a deal. You know, you see him with a thing stuck in his heart. Yep. You don't see it pulled off the heart, and you never see a burial. Well, you got to think they. You can, don't see them they burying can, him. They can bring him back. Is what was his love interest in the last movie? She was a witch. That's right. So, so if you wanted to, you could go through that route. I mean, it's obviously it's comic books. You can write anything you want and somehow pass it off, and it's fine. That's the point of comic books. It's not real life. <laughs> not real if you life. Want real life. Go watch back. the news. Or so, or the fact that Peacemaker supposedly died in the in the movie. Right. So, and at the very end credits, you see him laying on a slab, and, and he's he, back. They're gonna do. 
you know, surgery to him and bring him back to life. Yeah, exactly. It, you know, so I like that. So, yeah, I think we'll see Flag again. I think he's a major part of Suicide Squad, and he always has been. He always was. So, you know, it, they didn't show us the bring back of him, but they can easily show us the bring back of him. Uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Like, it's a comic book character. There's only a few comic book characters who have to remain dead. Mm-hmm. The all, the, all the rest will come back at some point. You know, they killed off Superman. Well, there was no way they were getting people lost their freaking mind ah, when mind. the comic books they killed off Superman. For the people who really thought that Superman DC, die, no that way. DC was really going to kill off their main character forever, yeah. and not just have some big event where he one comes the, back to make you buy more flag comics. Flagpole of the Trinity. That, yeah, exactly. They're not that. killing anybody off that 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 easily. You know, we know Uncle Ben has to stay dead, right? Yes. Bruce Wayne's parents have to stay dead. Martha. Right. Oh, don't even get that. <laughs> that's going to be the whole podcast. We're going to talk about fucking Martha for an entire podcast. Now. Pardon my French, but that bullshit's got to go. Yeah. Okay? That that reason alone, he should have got, like, deducted in pay. <laughs> that he allowed that to be on, on a screen, put that down on film. He should lose some pay over that one. So, anyway. All right. Well, that is, uh, I think we're just about out of time. I know it's a little less than an hour. We want to do an hour, but you have a hard out. you got to get going. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate you coming by and, and uh, you know. Doing the first, the first this is the first one we recorded. I don't know that it'll be the first one out. It probably will be because um, I've been talking about Suicide Squad online and doing some uh, some other stuff with it and just promoting it a little bit. So we'll probably drop this one. So look for these on Tuesdays. We're gonna drop these midday on every Tuesday. Uh, we're also gonna do some just quick three to five minute rants on different topics and different things uh, throughout the week. So you always have some content coming out from us. But I want to thank you. Dino for helping me out today and being our first guest host on the uh, on the podcast. What did you think? Oh, thank you very much. I I had a great time. I mean this this is definitely stuff I love to talk about. I we mean, do. We talk all the time. We talk all the time. I mean I've known you many years. Uh, I, I could say all of that them. easily. Yeah, all, all of them. them. Uh, <laughs> You're older than me. And the fact uh, I tell that, you right now, he's older than me. No, I'm not. <laughs> By much. <laughs> right. But no, we we talk about all this stuff all the time. And the fact that we're going to bring this out to everybody like this is. What everybody needs. Well, and that was the motivation, right? We sit around talking about this shit all the time. Why don't we just make it a podcast? That's right. Before we started recording, we had to keep stopping ourselves because we already started talking about stuff. We're like, save it for the podcast. Save, save it, it for the damn podcast. Right? We keep talking about stuff that's going to be on future podcasts. Because we're going to get to the podcast and go, uh. uh what should we say? What should we say? I so. So, all right, I want to thank everybody for listening to the first podcast. You can find us everywhere at entertainmentrants.com. We have a Twitter, Facebook, uh, and Instagram, TikTok. Uh, everything's at Entertainment Rants, except for Twitter. That's Entertain Rants because that extra four letters kills them. Kills so them. Uh, everything else is Entertainment Rants. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you'd like to leave us a review, we would greatly appreciate that. 20 seconds to 90 seconds would be fantastic. Just write us a review on the podcast, and uh, we're going to start reading them. Uh, on the podcast if we like a review we're gonna just gonna print it out and read it uh, so you get your re- uh, review read online that'll be fantastic and we'll post it so we thank you for that uh, drop us a line and definitely hit us up and let us know what topics you would like to discuss we have a long laundry list of stuff that we want to talk about um, but definitely we want to hear from you it's not just movies uh, TV shows music uh, anything in the world comic books uh, anime video games anything in the world of entertainment you want us to talk about and riff on we'd love to do it and we're also looking for guest hosts so if somebody, you know, if you'd like to come on and do be a guest host or a guest on the show, definitely let us know. Just let it look at us on our website at entertainmentrants.com. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.